Fuck it, I'm gonna start now. So the last move I left off at was up forward three plus four, which is a shitty move. So that means the next move on the list is. Let me scroll down here. There we go. Up forward three, four, four, two. Which, uh. I always wonder what this move was about. It literally forces crouch. Forward, forward, two. But it's negative 15. Zero on hits. On counter hit throw? Why does it say throw? You got a free crouch grab? It says throw on RB Norway. I don't know why. 31. And is that why? Because the Lariat counts as a hit throw? Is that why it says throw? I don't know. Knockdown. And it says knockdown in like parentheses. What if he's crouching? No, this doesn't have that. You're thinking of uh, the Jaguar step move. You're thinking of, what is it, that? That's what you're thinking of. This is forward forward two. And then you have a one follow up. Forward forward two one. Oh no, okay, RB Norway fucked up the labeling. They fucked up the labeling. It's not forward forward two. This is supposed to be forward forward neutral two. They just didn't put neutral for some reason. They're talking about the low. Forward forward neutral two. On counter hit, you get a hit throw. This used to go into a, uh, a grab that you have to input. Now, on counter hit, he automatically just does the short arm lariat. Right? And uh, this low on normal hit is zero. Armor King used to have a really good version of this because it was like plus, like a lot, and it forces crouch. This only forces crouch to zero. This is actually launched punishable by most of the cast because it is negative 15 on block. Still, it's a popular King move because King is always like dashing forward and shit. <clears throat> but yeah, it is negative uh, 15 on block. But since it's a forward forward move, it does realign, but it looks like it kind of tracks well in general. Yeah, it looks like it kind of tracks well in general. So you don't have to worry about the realigning. So, oh, wow, I got to run at that time. So you could go right, I guess. But you have to time it well. You can't really go left, it looks like. Oh, you can, you can walk it, but you can't really step it, it looks like. Yeah, so there's no real tracking in it, but the forward forward uh, input makes it so you could uh, make it realign, you know, before you swing it. So it's a decent low, but it's actually super risky in that room. Outside of that, yeah, there's not much to this. On regular hit, it's kind of trash because it's only 14 damage, zero on hit. So much risk for regular hit, so maybe it's not like, it's kind of whatever. I guess if you test your opponent with it and see if they don't know how to punish it, because a lot of people don't seem to know how to punish this. You can kind of throw it out there. The range seems all right. Yeah, the range seems pretty good. Look at that. That range is really good, holy shit. Yeah. So this is, uh, what's good about uh, having a low with this much range, especially a forward moving one, is it'll clip people backdash canceling. Unless they, you know, duck into it and block. But people that backdash cancel, it's hard to space something like this out. Look at that shit, it's a phantom hitbox on that. So that's one use for this. Yeah. Look at that, oh my god, this shit's hitbox is crazy. Alright, so yeah. Alright, so it's not as bad as it seems, but it definitely has its uses. I guess that's why you see good players using it. Definitely seems useful. It's just very risky if the opponent knows the matchup. So next we got four four neutral one plus two. This is a fucking amazing move, right? So I talked about this last time with part one. On uh, on counter hit, he gets a couple of things for free because on counter hit four four neutral one plus two, it's a uh, plus eighteen. But he spaced out, so whatever you swing with afterwards, you have to swing with like you have to confirm it pretty quickly and swing right away. 
But there's a couple of things to get some free. The easiest one is probably just back three. It's an easy mash back three that gets you a wall splash and you're the wall, right? The one that he gets now is probably better. Well, that definitely is better. Is forward two one, which also wall splats. Uh, and it's actually one frame faster than than back three. So go figure. So it's like this is definitely like the best option now. And then there's the little margin shit, right? A lot of people were talking about it in the chat last time. The little margin is forward one plus two when you have rage. Whenever you have rage, uh, forward one plus two combos into rage drive, and you can get the elbow drop there, I think. Um, yeah, I think that's guaranteed. Yeah, that's one of the situations where the elbow drop is guaranteed for a, a shitload of damage. As you can see, it doesn't combo, so the scaling always resets in a situation. So, you can, tell, you can totally... That is all one combo. 30 plus 19 plus uh, 25. That's a combo. I'll record it on myself in case you don't believe me. Is that really guaranteed? Someone in the chat told me last time that this is guaranteed. This is what little Majin does. I'm starting to question this. It is. It's 17 frames. Okay, so I'm slow. That's definitely guaranteed. Because if it wasn't, it'd be like... Uh, it'd be like... Right? Okay. Guaranteed. As long as you're not slow, because the push on counter hit is plus 18. What's up, video games? What's going on? Um, yeah, I know that was mentioned recently. You could uh, against Double Jin, you could sidestep right into duck, and you'll beat out Hell Sweep, Electric, obviously because you're ducking, and that's what tracks towards that side. And then all his other options that usually tracks that side lose out. Give me a moment here. Is the volume okay? I never know. Um, but anyway, yeah, so you got the little margin shit here. When you get the push. But you have a one frame uh, leniency window to confirm and do the forward one plus two, which is a high, so. Honestly, if I uh, if I were going against a king player that were using this, when I eat the counter hit push, I would duck <laughs> when they're enraged. Because then I know if, if they happen to fuck it up, if I get caught and, I ha and they happen to fuck it up, you can launch them. Yeah, I don't like stealth nerfs. I really don't. I really do not like stealth nerfs. I wish that they were open with that kind of stuff. And they were saying it was after Kudans won the Tekken World, you know, World Finals, which makes it even shittier to me. Tekken historically hasn't nerfed characters uh, after console version uh, outside of like oh they wanted to like fix stuff like tech attack tournament 2 the console characters had some bugs especially Kuni Mitsu she was ducking mids just by ducking regularly which still happens sometimes in this game I think uh, in certain instances but still she would just duck mids in, right in her face uh, on axis and everything and then she would go under shit like this or this if I'm not mistaken or was it this whatever it was a bunch of king mids and other mids and shit um, they passed that shit pretty quick. Or, or um, regular ogre, ancient ogres, uh, his infinite kicks being an actual infinite at the wall. Shit like that. They passed that shit. But they didn't do any balancing passes. This is the first Tekken where they're doing constant balance passes. But I feel like they're getting a little too crazy with it. Like, Kazumi's been nerfed like three times and shit. Well, Kazumi was nerfed 
before console. But Kazumi's been nerfed yet again after console. Shit like that. Whatever. Anyway. It's like, who the hell's using Double Jin like that anyway, you know? It's like, give me a fucking break. Kudon's barely won. It's not like he won because, like... Devil Jin is a cheap motherfucker, but it's not like he won because, you know, oh my god, Devil Jin is this overwhelming character. Whatever. Anyway. Alright, so yeah, the push, key move, obviously, right? Remember, the, the big two, the big two follow-ups on counter hit are, um, forward two, one, without rage, with rage, forward one, plus two. And you can practice this, um, Wow. There you go. Yeah, it, it's 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 pretty easily hit confirmable. You just gotta get used to it. Kinda like Mars old push. Yeah, you could definitely do this. And if you wanna practice this, you could uh go to what is it? Uh, what's the counter hit thing again? It's been a while. Other settings, right? Here it is. Counter hit random. You put counter hits a random? And then you have a set to stand, it's a guard all, right? That's what you gotta do. Right? So, once you do that, you gotta get used to the counter hit animation. Right? That's not it. That's it. That's it. See? And that's kind of how you practice it. It's a little difficult when you're not used to the animation. The thing about Kings versus Mardix old push is that Mardix push, the animations are not similar on regular on counter hit like it is here. On counter hit, you you didn't get pushed back with Marta. You were like, oh. <laughs> and then you only got pushed back like this on regular hit. Obviously, I'm not used to it, so. If you're the king player, though, you want to practice this shit, right? See, you gotta practice that shit. Confirm. And you'll get good at it eventually. It won't take too long, I think. Yeah, Cat, uh, cat Pounce is like kind of overwrites it because that's forward forward one plus two. And this is forward forward neutral. You have to like let the stick go to neutral before pressing one plus two to get this. Same thing as a low. So the push is actually zero on block. Really good move. Look at this. It's zero on block and your space. And even at the wall, that's totally fine. Really, really good move. On regular hit, it's plus seven. Plus seven. Once again, though, on regular hit, you push back. So you're not really going to do much other than like forward, whatever, right? Yeah, look, forward two, easy gut check. All right, oh, that was hilarious. Yeah, forward two, guaranteed, cannot sidestep. But you can backdash it. You can definitely backdash it. Probably difficult to do, though. Seduce here, what's up? I just lab for seven hours, my brain is fried. <laughs> no more, more maps. Oh, right now. What's up? Uh, whatever. Did I miss anything? Oscar versus Lily. Uh, Alright. Alright, cool. So now you can learn some Ling and let someone else do the lab work for you. Uh, for those who don't know, I already uploaded King Part 1 to my YouTube. If you scroll down, you can see that stuff. So anyway... Yeah, the push, very, very good move. Next, we got forward, forward, one. This move got buffed because it's a homie move. I don't think it was a homie move before. Uh, and it's a mid. Does the spin so you get the wall splat. Nice chunk of damage. 
Uh, what else is got going on? It's only negative five on block and then on counter hit. Boom! Tailspin, right? I don't know what the best juggle would be because you're all the way over there, right? You know? <laughs> How much is, what, what damage would be? I just went into the, right into the giant, um, the uh, shiny wizard. I don't know. Is that even possible for King? I don't know what the best combo would be, but yeah, you get a combo out of it right away, which is cool. Instead of just this again, and then you go into like. Not an easy combo if you're not used to instant shining wizard, but 69 damage. <laughs> right on that, which definitely means you could probably get above 70 easily for this on counter. Hit. So this is a really good move. Really, really, really good move. The hitbox is obviously decent. Uh, I think it hits Ling AOP unless she does AOP duck. Let's test. I know it doesn't definitely does not hit AOP duck, but I've heard people say, or I've seen people say in chat rooms. That this hits AOP. So now let us confirm that, right? Let's see where the hell is Ling. Ling Shao Yu. Those who don't know, Bloodhog just did a really great breakdown of the Tanukana versus Ling fight to ten. Versus Ling. Tanukana versus Yu Yu, uh, first to ten. From the uh, Daigo stream. Learned a lot about Ling in that. We're gonna test versus three things. Right? We're just gonna go pop, pop, wait, down one person, right? Okay. We're just gonna go pop, pop, right? And we're gonna stay in AOP regularly, right? Next, we're gonna go pop, pop. Next, we're gonna go pop, pop. Right. I don't know if that was a good uh, input for it, but whatever. Okay, so yeah, see, it hits AOP if she doesn't duck. That's for sure. Oh, see, she ducked right under that shit. No surprise there, right? We know this. So, if you're wondering why I'm testing a homie move because of this, is because historically, moves that track really well, size of right AOP will still kind of beat them. Because it just does some fucked up shit to hitboxes sometimes. Maybe the timing might be it, but it seems like it's good. Well, there you go. It's not the most reliable thing to, like, just kill AOP, because if she goes to AOP duck, you're obviously going to, you know, eat shit. But remember, if she goes to AOP duck, she's open to lows. So you totally mix it up with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, lows. Why is it not playing it back? Huh, I wonder. <laughs> I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I knew that it would grab AOP. I, I didn't know that it would grab AOP duck. But yeah, you totally go for like slower lows if you <laughs> if you think it's uh, coming. You know? Easy, right? So yeah, that's kind of how you got to do with King, you know? You, either that or you got to play with patience. But if you want to attack AOP, you have to uh, mix up that mid with your lows, basically. Along with some clever realignment. So yeah, forward forward one seems to definitely be a really good move. And the thing is, I don't remember enough about this move in older games to tell you guys if it's stronger, but it's definitely a move I noticed that King players use more often. So I think it's definitely better than it used to be. Maybe it's because of the tailspin. Maybe that's what's new about the move. Maybe it always was an armor move, I don't remember. Uh, I do think it used to knock down, now it does the spin. But like I said, that's still a wall splat for you, so it doesn't matter. Uh, plus 14 on the spin, so you could set up a shining wizard. 
mix up with a dash dying swing. And uh, you can do other shit too. Forward two and shit like that. You know? But that situation where forward two is great, yeah. I don't think he's back dashing in that situation. Because forward two is uh, 15 frames and you're plus 14, so he ain't doing shit. Good move. Really, really, really good move. Only negative five on the block, right? Yeah. Right in their face, negative five. So you won't be doing too much sidestepping. But still. Great move. Alright, so next we got forward forward two. This is without the neutral. This is what I thought Arbinor was trying to say before. Um, this move has been around for a while now, and I don't really know what the usage for this move is. I was trying to explore to see if uh, you could get like a free ground throw off of this. Uh, but no. Oh, shit. I see now. So the 442 by itself is actually not bad because on block, it's plus two force crouch. Plus two force crouch on block, plus four force crouch on hit. So the 442 by itself is not a bad move. It's slow, though. 31 frames startup. 31 frames start up on top of it being a forward forward move. So you're probably going to be getting this out at like 33 uh, plus or slow. Your know, 33 of frames are slow. Uh, and he does that dumbass spin that's not really, a, doesn't really look evasive at all. It does uh, appear to move him to the left a little bit, but I doubt this is evasive. Yeah, I mean, maybe you can size up left and then do it, but uh, whatever. Uh, so he does have to follow with forward forward 2 1, which seems to be a natural combo mid high. I'm sure that's duckable. That's a lot of damage. 44 damage. Um, does that give him a free... Let's see if that's free. Ah, oh boy. Because if that, if that rage, uh, that's the positioning where if the rage drive is guaranteed for King, the uh, Macho Man, the up to elbow is guaranteed, right? That looks guaranteed. That King's rage drive, man, that's got to be like a top three or top five rage drive. Ling's, Ling's is unquestioned to be number one, in my opinion. But King's is so fucking good. Look at that shit. Alright, so this move's better than I thought, and even more buff because of the Rage Drive. How much damage was that total? Let's do a little math here. Alright, 47 plus 19 plus 30. So, 49 plus 47 damage, dude. He's getting well over 9, almost 100 damage? Wait, is my math right? Hold on. So, Rage, normal hit, 47, and then 19 plus 30 is 49. Dude, this dude is getting almost 100 damage. Like, this is like in the mid-90s on normal hit. That's really good. Is this hit confirmable? That's Hiccup. Dude. This is a very good move. Oh my, are you kidding me? Wait, am I crazy? It's a, yo, this is super Hiccup Oh my god, you can put the full delay. You can put the full delay and it's still combo. Bop, bop. Oh no, okay. There is a limit to how much delay you can put for it to combo. But still, that is... Totally hit confirmable. Random guard, right? Yeah, I'm not gonna hit confirm in case you couldn't tell. But you, this you could definitely confirm. <laughs> I'm no good. Trust me. I'm gonna get it once. All right, I gotta listen for it. <laughs> All 
Alright, what's throwing me off visually is that he, like, forces crouch on hit and on block. But I definitely... I definitely think this is Hicka from the This is... I'm just shitty at this. Very shitty. See, I, and I keep swinging when he's blocking. That's what's, that's what's throwing me off visually. Pretty difficult, but I'm pretty sure if you were to really sit down and grind this out, you could make this hit confirmable. I definitely think you can, at least consistently. Not maybe not 100%, but consistently. And if you can make this shit hit confirmable, this becomes a very dangerous move because then you get a situation where you get this for plus two on block. It's also an elbow, so you probably can't even counter it. because it's so slow. Uh, any of the rage shots that spike mid combo like Brian's King's Oscar and Drag are the best. If you hold back after the 442, you can cancel it. Oh yeah, I'm, um, I mean that's kind of gimmicky shit for sure. Uh, how do you test frame traps in the lab? Is that possible? Yeah, of course you can test frame traps. You can't set them up in the practice mode though, right? Yeah, you can. Uh, how do you test frame traps? How do you test frame traps? Uh, easy. Record it on yourself. How do I test the frame trap? Right? So I'll give you an example. Seduce here. Uh, the Tekken bot RB Norway says that forward forward 2 is plus 2. Right? Uh, while standing 4 is uh, 11 frames. Generic while standing 4. Force craft plus 2. It should exchange with a 13 frame standing move. This is a 13 frame standing move. Down forward uh, 2. So. If I'm going to block this and go into a down forward 2. That should exchange if I go with uh, with me going with an 11 frame move right now, and it does. See, he's putting himself at plus two, and he's doing a frame uh, a, a move that's two frames slower than the move I'm swinging after I block that. My while standing four is 11 frames. His down forward two is 13. Two frame difference. Follow. That's how you test the frame trap, unless you ask him something else. Yeah, no problem, no problem. You kind of have to know some basic frame data, some of the general stuff. Remember, jabs outside of, like, uh, uh, Jack, who has forward two as a 10 frame. Jabs are always 10 frames, right? For Jack, you have forward two as a 10 frame replacement. So you could start there to test your frame advantage. And also, in, like, 95, 99 maybe percent of the case... Uh, cases in this game uh, Standing jab is plus one on lock so you can use that to kind of help you use that like as a starting point to Test uh, frame data with like, you know So once you, you could use this to find like Slightly slower moves and then you know, whatever you know. Um, All right, so vote for two one seems really good High damage in general. Is there anything guaranteed uh, outside of the uh, maybe Ali kick? Maybe Ali kick is guaranteed. Alright. So I learned recently doing the Lars run through that when you're in this position, the way he knocks you down. Right here, how I'm in this position, face down, uh, head toward. I learned that the quickest way to block low in a situation where you cannot tech. This is an untuggable situation, if I'm not mistaken. 
Yeah, that's a hard knockdown. You cannot tech. So the quickest way to, to block low is not holding down back. It is not holding down back. You have to tap back. And then while you're doing the that get up animation, the one where you tap back, you got to press down back right away. Because if I hold back right now, you see that's a different get up animation than if I, uh, if I uh, hold down back, which is the equivalent of tapping up, right? See, if I tap up, I go straight up, which is a slower get up animation than holding back for whatever reason. In this specific situation, face down, head towards. That doesn't mean, I haven't tested this, but that doesn't mean it's the same case for, you know, for every other situation. Just this specific situation. And in case you're wondering, the way I tested that is, this is already up on my YouTube. I should make a solo video for it. Uh, the way I tested that was uh, uh, Lars' armor move that knocks you down. I forget the input, down forward, one plus two, I think. Uh, if you don't get up that way by tapping back and holding down back, his stomp is guaranteed. That's how I learned that. And that's actually, uh, in case you're wondering, if you have this set to stand and then guard all, that's what the AI, the dummy, the training dummy tries to do. It taps back and then it would hold down back if you were to go low. Either way it goes, Ollie kick definitely guaranteed here. Uh, let's record down back three, maybe. Down back three is not. Okay. So, 44 plus 11 damage. That's basically a 55 damage pseudo hit confirming <laughs> move. That's pretty fucking good. And if you happen to have rage drive, that's a good move. Very good move. All right, now I see why good players use it. All right, cool. So we're learning. Uh, once again, it's a forward forward move, so it might not have any inherent tracking, but the forward forward input will help you realign with your opponent if they are sidestepping. Uh, and I will show that again. All right, so if I go pop, pop. Ah, all right. It's a slow move, though, so it might not be the... Uh, What's a better situation to test? Oh yeah, how about this? This is gonna be weird. Right? Let's just do the forward forward two. Woo, look at that! <laughs> oh, I jumped. The timing is weird because it's good. Oh my god! <laughs> That's crazy! Holy shit, that move realigns. Uh, Oh my god, that realigns, dude. That definitely realigns. Because he's like, the spin, he like turns and faces them. And it's weird. That shit is weird. Alright, let's do it with a jab. Let's just try to time it. This is difficult to do, but... Because it's a... Oh, I cancel it back. So you can cancel it by holding back. Yeah, see, if you, if you got a good sidewalk in there... But if you if you're a little if you try to step, oh wow, Woo. the timing is just weird. Yeah, the timing is weird. He's realigning like normal, but the timing is awkward. It seems to be easier easier to go left. It appears to be, at least for King. King's sidestep is below average, so if you're like Lily, this is probably easier to get around. But it definitely has some bootleg ass tracking because it's a forward forward input. See, now you see how I'm easily able to go left? Wait, this is going to be a little weird to do. If I just delay it a little like that, it should. See? Alright, maybe not for walking. Yeah, maybe not for walking. So this is still a slow move, so even though it has a forward forward input, people could still walk around it, but I, this is the kind of move that I think would clip people fairly often. They're trying to walk around it. So you gotta be uh, pretty sharp with your timing, but it's not super strict. Like it is with fast forward four moves. Like, uh, like that's 15 frames. This is probably a better example. I bet you that this 444, is this on the, is this coming up on the list? It's the next move on the list. How perfect. Uh, so 444, this is probably gonna be a better example, right? I bet you 444 doesn't track. Yeah, see? Yeah. Now, if I add a little extra, uh, that's probably not enough. Like that. Oh, look at that. See? The forward, forward, the dash realigns it. So I have to time my movement a little later, basically. So if you get people that, like, uh, move, uh, try to sidestep right after blocking shit, 
that's when you have to just delay your shit slightly just a little bit and by delay i don't i don't just mean inputting the thing later i mean delay it by adding a little bit of movement a little sidestep a little dash just a little bit even a back dash realigns any sort of movement makes you realign with with the, your the axis of your opponent uh what's up crux i miss any questions uh can get the bot to hit after blocking though. Oh, uh, no, you cannot, unfortunately. That's a Street Fighter thing. And a uh, 2D Fighter didn't have that. But Tekken does not. You basically have to record shit on yourself. If you want like a string of commands, you have to manually input that and record that on and then do it on yourself. Uh, yeah, all right. All right. So yeah, uh, 444 is actually the most best one on the list. And on counter hit, this is a hit throw? This is the, the DDT, I think, right? Yeah. On counter hit, you get a hit throw DDT for 50 damage, which is really good. Uh, and 444, oh, but wait a second. 444 is negative 15. Ew, it's not, it's not a good move. That's not a good move. Oh, <laughs> the pushback. Oh, wow, really, forward two? Holy shit. Damn, this creates a lot of space. All right, I see. So even when you're blocking it deep, point blank. Oh, man. What are the fast... I don't think he has... Oh! <laughs> so you know what's going on here? It's not that back one has more range than forward two. It's that king's body. His arms stick out, his head sticks out, but his midsection is kind of pushed back. Kind of like how Kuma's fucking dumb legs are pushed back on his body. King's midsection is pushed back, and that happens to be where I'm swinging forward to. That, that's what appears to be going on here. So you would have to test, if you're running into a King Class using this move a ton for whatever reason, you'd have to test with your own character what could reach you. Okay, so yeah, that's not as bad as I thought, I guess, because of that, but I still wouldn't call this a particularly good move. But whatever, it's yet another mid-hitting wall spot option, I guess. Knockback with a nice bonus for when he counter hits. Uh, and it does come out fast out of that. 15 frames out of that, so. Uh, oh, that's alright, I guess. Um, next, we got 4 4, the, uh, the, the, the pounce. So, this is a weird ass move. Uh, you see how up close it hits high? See? That's hitting high right now, right? If you get this from the tip. really hard to do uh, there it is it hits low from the tip it hits low up close it hits high uh ja you know there's like a handful I almost said a handful man as of right now i only know of one other move that has a mechanic like this uh jacks and uh jacks forward forward three plus four i think the dive bomb move uh or is it four four one plus two no it's four four three plus four i'm pretty sure with jack it hits mid up close, but from like really far away, like back here, it actually hits low. The thing about Jax though is, whether he hits you or not, you can launch him. So it's like a round ending gimmick. Uh, for Kings, it's not quite the same. The Pounce, uh, this is negative four up close. Variable frame data, I'm sure, right here. Let's see what it says. Uh, we have 20 active frames on this move. 20, according to the bot, right? Uh, when it hit low, it was on frame 11. Is that what it said? Yeah, it hit low. Oh, but the, the active frames... The, that's weird. The active frames changed to 2 out of 7. Weird. 20 high active frames, 7 low active frames. Weird. Uh, here's what RB Norway says. Negative 5 to plus 14. That's about a 20 frame spread, yeah? Uh, on block. <laughs> Um, and then the far away one the low is negative 25 to negative 22 So the low is if you happen to block this low always launch punishable the high is always safe But can also be plus Plus six see plus six from that range negative five over here That's the low Plus 11 I don't know if that's a true plus 11. Like if I could, uh, if it's a guard breaking plus 11, I don't know. Let's see if it is. That's the low. If it hits him, it's low because he's stand guard. Oh, it guard breaks. It guard breaks, it's a true plus 11. 
So theoretically, if you could get this to plus 14, you could get a free back one too. That's plus seven. I mean, good luck, like, you know, good luck, like, guessing when you get that spacing. I feel like to get better than plus 11, I need to catch him in the Oki situation, which is probably another good time to use him like this. That's plus 10. All right, yeah. If you get plus 12, you get a back one, too, or whatever. Uh, might be 13 frames are for the high, 7 are for the low. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, Tasty Steve loves using 444 to respond because it's a fucking even flow DDT. This is like Raven style, right? Yeah, that's totally Raven style. DDT. Just short, doing the old Raven pose. He would like have the hand out to the side. <laughs> like he's going to do a twist of fate or something. Um, yeah, so this is like a weird goofy ass move. I don't know how, you know. I don't know how often when, when this move comes out in high level play. If it's on purpose or it's them fucking up the push. Because <laughs> the push is a way better move. But yeah. This, this has some weird stuff going on for sure. There might be some specific Oki setups, like I said, to get that plus, to get like a guaranteed at least plus 10. Uh, actual King players would know. I am not one of them. So yeah, I mean, maybe there's some goofy shit you could do with this move. But as far as I know, you could never, this never hits me. It's either high or low. And that's that. What's up, boss? I see little Machi sometimes. Yeah, I know. What I'm saying is, it is used. What I'm, what I'm saying is, I don't know if it's on purpose or if it's them fucking up the push. Because the push is 4 4 neutral, 1 plus 2. And this is 4 forward, 1 plus 2. Just know that if it's blocked high, it's always safe. Ah. So even if you're up close, they can block it low. And if they block it low, you're going to get launched. Easy. but the other two weren't. All right. So, yeah, weird-ass move. No tracking on this one, I'm sure. Uh, it does hit pretty fast. Faster than you would think. 20 frames. It hits on the 20th frame. So the moment he's in the dive bomb mode, it's active. Next, we got 4, four 2 plus 3. Ah, this move. Now, this move is pretty much only used as a frame trap. Here's the thing, though. You guys would have... I don't really know the frame traps. Sorry, not the frame traps. The tech traps. Sorry. Tech traps, I'm going to say. Off of certain knockdowns, that is a popular follow-up because if people get up, it will hit them in the back, cross-up style. And uh, in tech, and cross-ups are not blockable. Uh, the thing is, you'd have to uh, look up an actual King player stuff to know when those situations are possible. Um, maybe the... What was it? Uh -huh. Four, four, two, plus three. Okay. Now all of a sudden I can't get the fuck. Wow, that was a side throw. <laughs> this is awkward to do because you have to input forward forward. Maybe not off of that knockdown. Uh, I feel like it's off of certain throws. 
Definitely not that one. Uh, cross cancel Atlas Hammer. <laughs> um, set up a grab once, but I don't see it that much. Cat Pounce has cross up set up. Oh, Cat Pounce? This has a cross up set up too? That would surprise me. These are the kinds of moves that have cross up set ups. But like, it's like I said, I don't really know them. Uh, I think the old knockdown. Oh, is it on counter here? I think the old knockdown off of this. The one that looks like this. What's that? That knockdown? I think that used to give him that as a setup, right? I think. Maybe, uh, oh, which one? No, definitely not. I need to be up close. Yeah. Like I said, you have to look up an actual King player's guide. They all talk, I'm pretty sure they talk about this. Um, either way it goes, when you're up close to cross body block, you do the hit throw and you splash on them like that, and that happens. Um, and it's like a nice little chunk of damage. How much is it? 35 damage. Uh, from far away, it doesn't do that. It just knocks them down. Or oh, actually forces crowd, sorry, at negative eight. So they actually might get a free grounded hit on you. Um, and then if they block it, you're actually unsafe. Negative 23. Right, no, not negative 23. From far away, it's negative 12 to plus 5. So the spacing, a lot of active frames on this one, but it forces crouch. Up close, negative 14. From far away, you could get as much as plus 5 out of this. Force crouch. Which might give you like a wake up kick mix up. Plus 2. <laughs> Plus five, I think it gives you a free Waco kick mix up. It's always mid though. It's probably only like in the Oki situation where you really get a plus five. So there's no real tracking with that move either. If it wasn't a forward forward, it'd probably be much easier to do as a Oki trap. A forward forward means that you have to like input it right when you recover out of whatever the hell you did. So it's an awkward feeling thing. All right, so next we got the new, the Triple H or Jumble Saruta since this is a Japanese game. The running knee. This move got nerfed during the arcade days, right? During the arcade only days. Um, zero on block. No active frames? Six, six active frames. That's plus two. So zero at worst. Um, well, whatever. How much damage to do on hit? 25 damage. Does the slide knock down? They could probably hold back. Yep. So if they don't hold back, free shit. a while running move. That's a sloppy info, but whatever. Doesn't matter. Yeah, so no inherent tracking, really. Like, none at all. Yeah, no inherent tracking at all in this. That's why it's not used that often. It is a knee at least, so if people are trying to counter it, they get fucked up. By the way, one thing I forgot to mention earlier about 4421 is that it's only negative one on block if they do block it. It is mid high though. Yeah. Duckable, I'm sure. Daddy next because I forgot to before. Alright, so full 
running three. Knock down, nothing special on counter hits. Yeah, nothing special on counter hit. They can still roll back, I'm sure. Yes. Alright, so next we have Running Exploder. This is a really good move. This is why I'm running 3 plus 4. Plus 17 on block. Like, because people ge uh, generally know that that's like super plus on block and they don't want to swing because this is going to counter hit them if they swing. You could get away with shit like the Aris, right? The Aris is... Get up, giant swing. <laughs> if I could time it right. Wait, it's... Oh, that's why. I'm pressing no. You can also roll into it if you want to get crazy. Ah, it's much natural to roll because you got to hit the forward. There it is. Or the other Aris, which would be the roll forward giant swing, right? Uh, the timing is weird. <laughs> Feels natural to do that on a roll forward because you're already holding forward. So yeah, just so you guys can see. There's not really any uh, any tracking on this, but he lands on the floor. Also, this shit, his whole body is the fucking hitbox. You guys have probably seen gifs or clips of this shit going past somebody. And then his head hits somebody up on the rear or some shit like that. Because his whole body, it might as well be a fucking cycle crusher that's plus on block. Because his whole body is definitely a hitbox during this move. Right? So if you try to mash anything. See? I try to do the low from standing. Counter hit, free jump. And that's only negative 12 on block in that situation. So keep that in mind. Get people to stop mashing after blocking this by uh, hitting them with that. And then uh, follow it up by getting up and doing crazy shit in their face. I just want to see how, how big of a window you have to get up and do a 10 frame. Yeah, okay. So it's not, you're definitely uh, being deceptive and playing off of the uh, heavy plus frames to get up and actually do something like that. Uh, just to show there's no real tracking. <laughs> I had a feeling. That's one of those mid ducking moves. <laughs> oh, whatever. Okay. So next we got while standing moves. That's all the forward, forward, and while running moves. Uh, so the while running three plus four, the running exploder could be as good as plus twenty three on block, uh, as bad as bad. Funny way to put it. As plus uh, seventeen on block, guardable plus seventeen. So there's no guard break. All right. Next we got while standing two, which is while standing two. So this is his fourteen frame while standing punisher. Nice little chunk of damage, uh, 36. Uh, Angel was in the chat last time saying, this is hit confirmable. I don't know about that. See, unlike the 4421, this is a super strict window to get the follow-up. I don't think so. You know what, the, you know what this is hit confirmable in that bootleg ass, like, Hey Hachi Twin Pistons way, where if you were to, the thing about like those Twin Pistons from Hey Hachi and Kazumi, is if you sidestep into the down forward one two, the twin pistons, 
by the time you input the down forward one, you're going to start to swing. You could tell if they whiffed something, whether it's a jab or something, and they could easily confirm that. You're not confirming the fact that the actual first hit connected. That may be the case here. You could tell that you caught when you swing the first swing, you could probably notice that they did something and then do the second hit. Uh, either way goes, on block. This is uh, ne only negative 12, so it's not that bad on block. Uh, the first hit by itself, so plus one. Negative nine. And you can delay to, ca to catch people off guard on the second hit. And both hits are homing. You can see the sparkles flying with both hits. Wait, no, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> the first hit is definitely homing, maybe not the second hit. Uh, uh, it is a tailspin, so if it hits him out of the air, you'll get a combo. Uh, it does the spin. That second hit does a grip. 30 damage. Shit. So if you delay the first hit, connect the second hit. That's actually a lot of damage. Uh, according to this, plus 12. Yep, plus 12 with a spin. So you can set up a running... And you're still pretty close. You can set up against the Shining Wizard out of that. Pretty easily. Which allows you to also dash up and giant swing. Just like that. Anytime you get a nice little dash up, it's the Shining Wizard. Dash up, giant swing. Not dash up, giant swing. Works too. Awkward input, but if you get the hang of it, it allows you to mix up the throws. The throw bricks. I gotta pump up the AC. It's getting fucking hot. Woo! By the way, feel free to ask tech and questions like always, guys. It doesn't have to be King related. It could be anybody. Microsoft? Why is Microsoft messaging me about an account? I didn't make an account. Alright, um. So next, we have. I mean, no need to test the tracking on that because it's a homing move. Uh, next, we got his while standing four. Doesn't he have a way to go into zero on the block? Or on the hit? Plus two. That's a good way to test tracking. I mean, a decent way, at least. Plus two might be too much. Wait, I can use a generic low. Yeah, negative two. There we go. Better. Uh, the, it does push out, though. Yeah, it does push out, so it's not the best. Uh, up close, this might have decent tracking. Yeah. Do you know how plus Miguel's command grab is? No, I do not. Not off the top of my head. I think it's plus two. Actually, hold on a second. Let's just say it. Let's see. Uh, it's down forward plus one plus two, right? No, it doesn't say it. What's the input for it? That's a mid. Uh, Miguel back plus one plus two. Uh, mid. It's down forward plus one plus two, right? Yeah, it is. Okay, so the, this bot doesn't say it, unfortunately. Uh, I think it's only plus two. I think. I know it's not too much. Um, I'll test that in a bit. Anything else? Okay. So anyway. Uh, yeah, while standing four, it's pretty much standard while standing four. Negative six on block. Doesn't appear to have any real tracking. Uh, plus five on hits and counter hit. Uh, 20 damage. I think it's a little more damage than usual. I think they, they're usually under 20. It's a nice little chunk of damage. Right. Uh, next we got while standing plus one plus two. That's his while standing launcher, 18 frames. His actual while standing like launcher, while standing, is hop kick from crouching because it's 15 frames. That's 15 frames. If you were to punish him with negative 15 low, use hop kick from crouching if you're king. Because this is 18 frames. Too slow. Although full crouch down four plus two is 
15 frames, I don't know if you could input that instantly out of a block low situation. You might. And if you could, that's probably better damage, now that I think about it. If you can. It's definitely unusual for like a tech character to have to do that. I mean, Steve has to do that, I guess. But whatever, you could choose, if you have trouble doing this as a block punish, you can totally input hop kick from crouching. That's a low block punish. Um, but yeah, while standing plus one plus two for the big stuff, I don't know if he gets any good combos off of this. 20 damage launcher versus a 21 damage launcher. If he gets any cool combos off of this, then I would say do it. 14. 14. Same damage. Get that dash in before the downfall four three, I'm pretty sure. Ugh. Wow, you didn't got you didn't have to get the dash in. Seventy four damage. So it might be like similar damage if you're able to do the, that combo consistently, I guess. It's Hopnate guaranteed after Cali roll. Uh, uh, I think it is. That's a good question. That's a King specific question, so I'll test that right now. But uh, if it's not, you have a better option, but let me test it for you anyway. King's 10 hit is guaranteed off of Cali roll. Cali roll to the real kick I'm assuming you're talking about. Welcome to the King of So Cali roll into the real kick is negative 11 on block, right? Get ready for the next and King's battle. 10 hit. Uh, so what that means for Ling is if you hit her with an 11 frame move or faster move, 10 frames obviously, it's going to hit her back turn. She cannot be hit in the front, as far as I can tell. Let's see. I haven't heard of any way to turn her around. See, it hits her in the back. <clears throat> yeah, he's still gonna launch. Because historically, hop kicks in general was a way to punish this. Because all she could do for, do for punishing you for doing a, a move slower than 11 frames was punch parry, right? Which I'll show you right now. Historically, right? If you um, if you did anything slower, I'm gonna do a 12 frame move, back one, right? Yep. It's active on the first frame. Boom, and then she gets to juggle, right? But if I do a 10 frame move, you hit her in the back as a punish. So that is like the, the, the trick, historically. The trick to punish that is you could do a slower move, it just had to be like fits fast and a kick, uh, basically, or an elbow. The thing is, now they gave her a back turn manual parry, which I don't know the input of. Uh... Yeah, she has like a, 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 re a regular attack reversal from back turn now, which I don't know how to do. But what that means is she'll be able to reverse kicks now. Right? So you actually have to like be much more uh, specific with your punish on that. But King has a really good punish. Uh, no, back or forward. No, maybe one plus three. Yeah, one, uh, forward one plus three. Or back one plus three. 
or just one plus three. <laughs> right, so uh, I'll show that for you right now. Oh man, the king doesn't have any regular ass hop kick. Um, four, four, four. No. What is Fifty frames. So fifty frame kick is a hop kick, right? This is fifteen frames. So attack property wise, it's the same thing as a hop kick, right? One plus four is the counter. Not one plus three. I think I said one plus three earlier. One plus four. Um, yeah, see? She parries you and then she gets, uh, I'm assuming, a launcher. I don't know. I don't know if she gets anything else. So if I'm not mistaken, that's new to her. But King's Hop Kick is a knee. So it's still going to hit her for doing that shit. Although, you have to realize that that instantly turns her around. Right? So one of the ways to instantly turn around from crouching, I'm sorry, from um, back turn, is to attack, right? If I'm not mistaken, throws always do it too. So you have to be aware that you might have to change, confirm which way you, which direction you hit Ling in, if you were to choose hop kick and do the appropriate juggle. Because I'm assuming if you hit her in the head back turn, it's gonna be a different juggle, isn't it? Right? That's a general thing, that's not just Link specific either. Right, so if she were to throw, she actually stays back turn when she throws. Yeah, that's unusual. See, it hits her facing you. So, to rewind, um, no matter what she does here, right? See, now it's it's finicky. But you will at least get most of the hits to connect. But you can you can get the whole thing. It's finicky. I've definitely seen the whole thing connect. But if you're too slow, that's what's gonna happen. I, I don't know if you could delay it. Yeah, I don't know if you could delay the lows. Maybe not. But that is guaranteed up to that point. So maybe now you can consistently get the two lows and end it there. And it ended there for 52 damage. Which is a ton of damage still. It may not be a launcher, but it's a lot of damage. So that's that's the rule. No matter what your character is, that is the rule for punishing California low for Link. It's not King specific, it's just the thing that King specific uh, that King specifically has is that his hop kick is a knee. So you can't do a manual, a, a regular standard attack reversal on it, which is what one plus four, as Doomshine just said, from back turn is. It's a standard as attack reversal. Same thing with forward two one, by the way. Forward two one will hit her in the back. Arrows just went left. This is the. Oh no, that's the grab. Sorry, the attack counter. Yeah, see. All right, so the same thing with forward two one because it's the elbow. See, that's gonna hit her. It's just the reward is a lot less than just going for the uh, 10 hit. Seven. Some characters unfortunately don't get anything crazy when you when they block that. Most characters get good shit though. King. King. Because you have to um there are characters that get for example Kazumi in most instances Kazumi, if she connects a one one on your back, guaranteed down four one two. The thing about that, though, is that's only a gap in regards to blocking. That that, that becomes unblockable. That does not become unattack reversible. <laughs> Uncounterable, if you will. So any characters that have a back turn parry or some sort of weird shit like Akuma teleporting when he's back turned, uh, that's not guaranteed. So if Kazumi were to try to punish 
that with a 1-1 one, one, and then go into down forward 1, Ling would be able to do the punch parry and BAM! Get a free launch. You have to do strings. It has to be strings without any gaps. So Geese, 1, 2, uh, 3. All combos on her back, guaranteed the launcher. Or Geese is 1 meter, crouch jab, forward 1. It's a, it's a maximal cancel, guaranteed on her back. Which means you get back turn, uh, EX, quarter circle back, 1 plus 2. Three into the mid, and you get a juggle. All of that shit, Geese gets on her. All right, so we're back here. Um, we were talking about offstanding one plus two, right? That's the uh, in comparison to full cross down forward one. Oh, the full cross down forward one is the low. Full cross down forward two is the mid punch. Okay, that's the actual 15 frame of full cross outside of hop kick. Though this is negative 14 on block. So, uh, while standing 1 plus 2 is only negative 10, thanks for the follow, Kitachu. This is only negative 10, apparently. So, while it is slower. Alright, he does get it. I was trying to see if it, if it high crushed. Yeah, negative 10. Negative 10 on the dot, so it's also less risky, even though it's slower. Yeah, so that's not bad. The only problem with this is the range is shit. The range on this is pretty shit. Um, well, not that bad. Yeah, it's not great. The range on this is kind of shit, so if you were to use this as a block punish, like lows that push out a bit, or lows that could be blocked shallow, that leave the character her box really low, you know, like a snake edge, this is probably gonna whiff. You're probably gonna want to go with that. That's gonna be your probably your go-to to punish those lows that are like when you block like the capoeira lows and shit. The lows that have that stagger block animation that make them fall to the floor. This is probably gonna be your go-to if I were to guess. Um, how the way it goes while standing. This is something you could do off of a read by full crouching someone's face. Although this is more popular to do really. All right, so. Yeah, that's why I'm standing one plus two. Let's test the tracking. Down four pushes out too far though. Yeah, it's, it seems like it's good for his. If it, yeah, maybe not. It pushes. This pushes out too far. So it's not a good example. Um, I, this is plus twos, which is too much. If I can put myself at a. Man, his down four, his generic down four pushes out further than a lot of other down fours. Uh, give me down three. That leaves him a little bit closer, at least. Yeah, it seems like it's okay for his left side. As long as you're close to him. If you're, if you're too far out, yeah, but only for a step, not for a wall. If you're too far out, though, you'll get around that easily. Get us off! Uh, someone's knocking. I'll be right back. Sorry about that. They only knocked like one time and then they left mad quick. 
probably deliver the delivery of dog food. I have to go pick it up at the local post office. Damn, it's fucking hot. I gotta pump up this AC even more. left side <laughs> I should be specific it track while standing one plus two appears to track sidestep towards his left side so the opponent side steps to their right uh, but not walk next we got full cross down forward one which is the slow ass slow the slow ass gimmicky shit right here um, isn't there an instance where, okay, there's no more back row. There was, in the older games, I forget what it was that did it, but in the older games, there was an instance where if you were to back row, this was guaranteed. I just don't remember it, and it might not even matter anymore because you can't back row. Uh, my other way goes, since this is gimmicky-ass, high-crushing, super slow-low, it's seeable. This used to be safe on block because they're stupid uh, with these fucking moves. In Tekken 6 and Tag 2, they made this shit safe on block, and he got a lot of damage. If for whatever reason you were not to block it, he got a lot of damage out of this shit. Now it's negative 12. Uh, so in general, you're going to want to low, uh, low parry it instead of low blocking it to get better rewards. Right? Hell, I've seen uh, this kind of low get hop kicked on reaction, so, you know, whatever. Yeah, it's just negative 12. There's no tracking on, on with that low, with these lows. Like, there's like one more that's like this is it's Paul's, right? Paul's full crouch down forward, one plus two. Um, with King, you could do this out of his crouch dash. You can totally input this as like crouch dash one, and this will come out. Um, not as like quarter super forward one, though, just crouch dash. As long as you hold the down forward, crouch dash, and hold the down forward, it'll uh, come out. If you just if a cross dash one, you're gonna get a wall standing one. So you can tell you, but you can totally do that. But oddly enough, you cannot do that with uh, full crouch down forward two for whatever reason. You cannot. You have to go to full crouch to get that, which is the next move on the list. Full crouch down forward two. I talked about this a little bit already. This is negative 14 on block, so it's uh, riskier than your average 15 frame move from crouching. Um, but it does space kind of weird. There are instances where a lot of jabs with when blocking this because people uh, key players tend to use this for far away because he moves forward a lot for it right King doesn't, King doesn't seem to have much of an issue, but certain characters tend to have an issue in certain ranges when they block this, punishing with jabs. For whatever reason, I can't tell you why, because it doesn't look like it pushes out or anything like that, right? It's just that King is just like, I don't know, he's really spaced. <laughs> it happens. Uh, or when Anna was in the game, some people would do her stance, auto hot kicks, lows on reaction. Oh yeah, whatever her stupid ass stance was called, I can't remember. Anna used to have a stance that uh, she would stand on one leg, and if any lows were to, if anybody would try a low on her, she would automatically crush it with a hop kick while she was in that stance. Which is silly, because I think she had a regular ass hop kick, didn't she? Whatever. It's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, this, uh, I don't think there's any real tracking with this. Huh. 
I mean, I was wrong. Yeah, I was definitely wrong. So it tracks uh, to his right side pretty well. <sighs> Excuse me. Whew. So right now it's looking like if I were to sidestep, uh, well, one plus two did track to his left side. So he has launchers that, uh, not walk though. But if you were to walk, then the homing move will hit you. So step guard doesn't really do much. Doesn't do too much. I suppose if I were to step guard, I would go toward this move because it's the more unsafe move. But it's the more commonly used move, right? really well known that this is negative 14 so but whatever just to show you guys see that's a 14 frame screen. Um, next we got sidestep 2 okay so we're done with the full crouch moves sidestep 2 uh, it's just like a big ass slap <laughs> it doesn't even look like a Larry it looks like an overhand chop that hits you like a Larry really far away though Ugh. No, you can't. That's a hard knockdown. So it's like forward 2 1. Yeah, pretty much the same spacing as forward 2 1. You might have some uh, decent run up Oki here. for that. punish it. So, if they have range, they can punish you for whiffing after they hold back. But it does catch uh, wake up kicks. Oh, see, I recorded that wrong. That's what that tells me. Man, I recorded it so well earlier. <laughs> Hit him in the leg. Getting st uh, standing straight up does blow it up, it looks like. Damn, I 
I did it against the AI before. Maybe because my two B-side execution is shitty. That's too much over this one random move, but I got it before. You guys saw it. The timing is strict, though, so it makes you think it's not as great as I'm thinking it is. Better to just forward 2 1 or something. Uh, do you get a free alley kick like your forward 2 1? Forward 2 1 has a free alley kick on it? Does it? You sure about that? that before but I never confirmed it's true doesn't look like you do ah there it is and that's hard that's very hard to do forward 2 1 gets a free down plus 3 plus 4 I'll leave it Like one time so far. And up oh, too slow. They block it too slow if you whiff it too early. It might. Nah, they, it pushes them out further than uh, forward 2 1 does. Talk uh, about the rest of this move, the rest of the data on this move. Uh, negative five. It's a side step move, so it's gonna realign automatically. Um, oh wait. Thirty. Wow. So that's gonna be the best follow-up off of this, right? If it, if you can combo off of it, doesn't look like you can. Doesn't look like you can. <laughs> that sucks. If you could get that combo off of that shit, it would do a grip, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, only negative five. It is a high. Same thing on counter hit. It would be a wall splat if the wall were right behind him. There's a couple of active frames that make this negative three at best, but that's about it. So it's just a, a move you can do on a sidestep. If the if the run up alley kick is guaranteed, alley kick is uh, really difficult to do. All right, so next up we got sidestep three for four, the boomerang, the jumping gaman giri. Um, to the face. This is just like a super. Like crazy read. That's all this is. This is something you could kind of throw out randomly, uh, but it is a high. But even if they duck it, it's like this tend to, this tends to not really go punished like that hard at least. So you can get floated out of it, but in case they fuck up trying to float you out of it, they eat 60 points on the counter hit. So that's a lot of damage. <laughs> you know, even if I duck it, he moves sideways. He moves to his uh, left side, so you can't really float him. It's hard to. Look at that, see? That 
best, you're gonna eat like a little random low hit. Nothing too crazy. Ah, right, so he is like Marduk. He could full crouch into a ground throw. <clears throat> Alright, so next we got back turn three. Oh yeah, Saturday from the floor is only negative one on block, by the way. Zero there. But he can't tech, so it's a little weird. I blocked it, uh, and I still hit him around it. Right? Oh no, I made a whiff. I didn't block it. Yeah, this is pretty much free if they <laughs> if they block it. See? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> you saw the way he got up, though? That hit him. <laughs> Careful how you get up. That kind of shit will happen to you. If you're not ready. But it is sort of safe on block. Hard to say. Because of your positioning when you land, it makes it weird to get up. But he cannot tech like Dragon Oak can tech off of his three plus four, which is like a jumping high, high, hitting low crush that starts juggles actually, unlike that. Uh, but the moment that Dragon Oak lands on the floor, he can tech. You cannot do that with this. You have to fall on the floor, hard knockdown, and then get a little tech. So anyway, uh, next we got the back turn stuff. First we got back turn three talked about this last time um there's a hit throw attached to this i forget if he needs counter hit back turn three no oh, maybe they took away the hit throw. he used to do a stunner off of something right there it is uh, on normal hit you could do one plus two just frame pretty much stunner uh, but uh, that's not even the best shit about this move. The best shit is. Uh, shit. So on counter hit, this gives a juggle. Nope. Wishful thinking. Seems like your only pickup might be down 4 4 3. I don't know. Let's see. It's <laughs> a whatever. Um, back to 3 on block is negative 16. Yikes. God, that move was awful. I think it hits grounded though, doesn't it? I've seen that used as a, as a Oki setup in older games. Uh, yeah, it hits grounded. That's definitely where I see it used. So if they were to get up uh, mashing, you know, with like a wake up kick. This will give you a juggle, and it hits ground. Obviously, no hit throw if it hits grounded, but... It being negative 16 makes me think it's not too great. Um, it's kind of weird to try to test the track on a move like this. Negative two on hit apparently the, the one plus two to put him back there. It seems like it tracks really well. Even 
why I put it on negative 11. So at least it tracks really well. You have to block it. Next we have back turn one plus two, which is just a good old unblockable high. Come on, so let's test the tracking. There's no trap. No surprise there, right? Next we have back turn down four. Oh, of course. Another one of those. Back turn down four, negative 17 on the block. So it's just like the regular edge drop here, pretty much. Yep, just like the down back floor, basically. It does it from back turn. <laughs> that's funny because that's supposed to be negative 11 yet he's able to crush the jab fucked up super fucked up really annoying move really annoying but you get floated out of it pretty easily too so be careful with that um, I thought that tracks just like the regular down back four but we're gonna test it anyway It's on one side, it seems. It could just be king specific, though. Yeah. So it's a little bit to one side, I guess, but it might just be king specific. Um, Alright, and that's the back turn stuff. Uh, of course, uh, like I saw earlier, if you input down three for whatever reason, you get what is usually a generic down four from back turn, which is 10 frame low. Pa. If you, you gotta input it with king as down three instead of down four because he has that drop kick, I guess. <clears throat> Next, we got Jaguar step. Jaguar step forward, Jaguar step back. It's three plus four to go forward, and you can hold forward, and he'll keep doing it until he gets dizzy, right? And then you could uh, back plus three plus four. This one you cannot hold, and you cannot uh, spin around multiple times. You can only do it once and then input it to do it again and again. And unlike when you hold forward, he doesn't appear to ever get dizzy. Alright, so I don't know if he gets the same moves. So, depending on how many. This is like Ling Zhaoyu's uh, Hypnotist stance. The game minimized on me. So, this, uh, Ling Zhaoyu has this stance called Hypnotist. Where she like sidewalks while she does this pose. And depending on how it does like three steps, I think. Uh, depending on how many steps she takes, the data on the attacks that she does on that stance changes. This has that mechanic going on. Right? With the uh, three buttons, or more than three. So you got Jaguar step one, Jaguar step two, Jaguar step three. And of course, there's a Jaguar step four also. And it does also have the mechanic going on. So let's start with, uh, does he have more than that? Uh, Jaguar step. Down forward four. And yeah. All right, so those are, the, those are the standard options at a Jaguar step. I know he also has grabs out of it. Or well, at least he did. Maybe not anymore. I don't know. We'll find out. All right, so let's start with Jaguar step one. Jaguar step one, high, juggle starter, normal hit. With one spin, it is negative five on block. If you do it at the first spin. If you, do the, if you do it at a more than one spin, it is always negative one. Right, so negative five. Negative one. It could be zero, because it's two active frames. Uh... And it does a little more damage off of more than one spin. Two spins, 25 damage. One spin, 21 damage. The only thing that changes after two spins is the damage. One, two, goes up to one, two, three. 31 damage. And then no matter how many spins you do, that it, the data stays the same. 
Uh, 31 damage, negative one the whole way. Crumple stun the whole way. Three, four. Oh, see, 31 damage still. One, two, three, four, five. Bam! 31 damage. Always negative one, also. So, two spins is basically if you want to make the data a little bit better to catch people off guard, I guess. But you don't see this shit much. You really don't. Axis, so it might be weird. I don't know if this works for these off axes, but I'm not even good at enough at the jungle to try it. Uh, well, whatever. Uh, so next we got Jaguar Step 2. So let me test the tracking on that. Like it should track in that direction and it does tracks at his left side pretty well he does not realign with the spins so that fucks up oh. <laughs> wow what the fuck So the timing, the timing changes up how it tracks, kind of. Yeah. Oof. Weird. The closer you are to like him being at the end of the spin before he does the attack, the uh, the less uh, ideal going to your right side is if you're going against King. If you were to sidestep this move. All right. So next we got Jaguar Step Two. Which is, uh, of course, on counter hit, Jaguar Step 2. Free ground, uh, sorry, crouch grab attack. You get the Viagra Driver. If you hit down plus two plus four. Or you get the uh, elbow into the short arm lariat. If you do down plus one plus three. Same damage, basically. But it is a 50-50 break because the animation looks the same. As you can see. No visual indicator, so it's like Soul Calibur style, 50 or Virtual Fighter, 50 50. Well, Virtual Fighter has a three way guessing game, Soul Calibur has a two way. Um, so, according to the data here, one spin is negative nine. Ooh, uh, ooh wait. You don't need a counter hit for this. This is on regular hit. I thought I thought this was only on counter hit. You get that uh, crouch grab attempt on regular hit off of that, and it's a safe mid. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right. I thought it was only on counter hit. So anyway, off of two spin, no matter how many spins you do, the hit data remains the same, plus 12 the whole way. Um, no 12 frame mids for King, so the only thing guaranteed is a crouch grab attempt or a crouch jab. Yeah, cross jab is the only other thing guaranteed. Whoopie do, right? That not that's not even guaranteed because it's counter hit only. So anyway, um, the hit data stays the same no matter how many spins, but the block data is different. One spin, negative nine. Two spins, negative two. Three spins, zero. And it doesn't get any better than that. One, two, three, four, five, zero. One, two, three, four, five, boom. Zero on block. Force is crouched though. Um, after two spins, this is negative nine standing. This is negative two standing. This is zero force crouch. So when you get to zero, it forces crouch. Which is a nice setup for giant swing. Because if they come up with while standing four, I mean, you're not going to get three spins all that often, right? But still. So if I 
tried a wall standing for this. I was too slow with the giant swing. Basically, a giant swing will be on a wall standing for because it's a 10 frame grab. Ah. It's counter hitting, so I'm one frame too, too slow with my giant swing in. But giant swing is a 10 frame throw. If you're not slow, if you get it out the moment you recover, it will be a frame trap. Alright, so let's test the tracking on this. Jeez, this looks like it tracked really good. Like if you were to try to sidestep the moment you see the spin. Okay, there you go. You have to walk. Stepping is not a... Uh, You have to like time it really well to step. So if you step, you would have to go to your left to step down. So King's the opponent's right. Huh! Maybe too early? Man! Not the kid. It's starting to look like sidestepping against Jaguar step in general is like a mixed bag. Only if he does more than one, it's a great idea. But if he goes right into it, right into a follow-up, you might eat shit for trying to sidestep if you don't cancel until a block. All right, so next we have uh, Jaguar Step Three. Right. So according to this, the hit data never changes. Oh, by the way, much like the uh, Jaguar Step 1, the damage values are with two of the same. One spin 15, two spins 18, three spins 22. And after three spins, it doesn't hire any, uh, the damage doesn't get any higher. So. All right, so next we got Jaguar Step 3, like I said. So, same thing on hit and on block. Low crushes, obviously, in this case. Mid. Kind of pushes off axis, but not much. Um, negative five for one spin. And then this only goes up to negative one. Much like the uh, Jaguar Step 1, basically. It goes negative one and it retains negative one the rest of the way, no matter how many spins. It's uh, 14 frames to jump, so it's not a great low crush. But the Jaguar step itself can low crush, I guess, so there's that. Um, the three keeps him standing, no force crash, of course. Uh, it says knock down the whole way, so I don't know if it's... One, two. And then the standing with the damage. Damage goes up to 34 and then no higher. Okay, and so that's that. Ooh, thanks for the follow, Azula Dab. It doesn't appear to be much tracking here. Wow, it's especially bad if you go right. If you go right, you get his rear. Then King is big, he'll be hit by the whole thing. Alright, so next we got... Oh yeah, so the Jaguar Step 3 actually has a hip throw attached to it. But you have to be close, it says. Oh, because he goes into the... Okay, gotcha, gotcha. So he goes, uh, if you press 2 plus 3, he goes into 4, 4, 2 plus 3 with the exact same properties. So they're saying it's a hit throw because the, you know, the 4, 4, 2 plus 3 counts as a hit throw close. That's what the, this thing is telling me. Um, so that's just the thing as a extra deterrent 
for mashing after the uh, Jaguar Step 3. I guess. You know, this might be one of those things that people use as like an Oki suit tool, right? Like, if I were to do this. Yeah, maybe after certain juggles, after certain knockdowns, maybe, if there was like a free follow up. Yeah, that doesn't work. This seems like the kind of tricky thing that could set some fucked up shit up if you do it in certain situations. What those situations would be, I don't know. I'm not a king player, but that's just something to think about with a move like this. Um, but their intention here is uh, to make it, oh, it's like a deterrent for mashing after blocking this, if I were to guess. So that's the only button you could add a Jaguar step you could go into that, though. Um, and then we have Jaguar step four. This causes tail spin to pitch him out of the air. Very high damage. High. That shit is 40 damage on normal hit. That's a lot of damage. Uh, and this is plus on block? Oh, I remember this one. Okay. That's plus 8. This is something I definitely see key players use. Like Majin and shit. This is probably why people would want to duck right here. They don't want to be put at plus 8. So then they duck and then they eat shit because of the uh, bam, right? The uh, mid. Which gives him a free crouch grab. This is the juice right here. More than one spin, it's an unblockable high. So two spin is on, and then when you get to the third spin, it's that glowing shit. 52 damage. Does it get any higher than 52 damage now? That would be sick, right? <laughs> Wishful thinking, but... Oh, man. If, he, if that were his tailspin move, a 40 damage tailspin move, his jungle off of this would be nuts, dude. It would be fucking crazy. Uh, but whatever. I guess it's just to catch people out of the air. I don't know if there's any other way to make this actually a, an actual tailspin in a jungle. Nothing seems to recover fast enough for you to do that, so... It's like my music just ended, so let me... Put something else on. Oh no, the game minimized. Ugh. Can't be playing around. The game minimizes too easily. Oh, that was six. What's number five? All right, the Yakuza playlist. So this Jaguar step stuff is actually kind of cool. I thought it was kind of whatever because there's no low out of it. But, um, I think it's like, like I said, I think a, a chain grab starts out of it. I'm not sure. But, um, knowing that he has this eye that's such a heavy frame advantage, that's a pretty good deterrent to duck. And the thing is, if you allow two spins to happen, I suppose that high is kind of seeable. Is it really? It's 17 frames. It's 17 frames. I think you would have to guess up that. I don't know. Maybe it's just... I think you would have to guest duck this personally. And if you have to guest duck this, then doing two spins into the mid is all of a sudden much better. Right? Let's, uh. Oh, damn. Funny that set itself up better. They'd be able to get up and sidestep anyway. But still, if you could find a way to fit this off of like an Oki situation, off of certain knockdowns and shit like that, there's some fucking shenanigans to be had, that's for sure. I'll give you an example. If you could set up two spins off of a situation where they tech and they're unable to sidestep or interrupt, you can make them guess between that and that. Both of them will be, uh, well, the mid will be safe. And not only will the mid be safe if you're able to set that up, the mid will be negative two safe off of two spins. So you can sidestep after, after pretty much. And that's a nice thing to have. And then off of that scary ass mix up, you get either the unblockable or or a potential uh, 60 damage if they guess wrong on the throw break on the free follow that's pretty cheap pretty cheap King is the character with probably 
I think King next to Ling Xiaoyu might have the most tech traps or sick like tech setups. Like Oki basically overall, especially for tech specifically. Uh, in the game. I think King is up there with Ling Xiaoyu. King might even have more. If you try to <coughs> get creative and look for this kind of shit, King might even might have even more than Ling Xiaoyu. Ugh. That's not what I meant to do. See, no, that's too slow. See, that's the thing where you'd have to sacrifice the juggle to do that and allow him to tech. But that's that's too much uh, drop damage, so maybe he's not great there. Oh, here's another one, but the low is free here, so that's not a great that's not a great one. <laughs> I'm sure there's something somewhere in some situation where you can make something like that work. Next we have Jaguar spin down forward four. Which looks like it should be a home. Oh yeah, I wanted to test the tracking on uh forward for so looks like it should have some tracking yeah looks like it tracks to his right side look at that all right so down forward four is the mid option but it is super unsafe yeah, it's a longer range mid option other than uh, Jaguar Step 2, which looks like it's a very short range mid option. Going into this mid kick, a lot more range, but incredibly unsafe. Um, knockdown. Knockdown, okay. this when you counter hit it causes that to happen it causes them to do that uh skidding get up <laughs> ah this mid is interesting so one jaguar step into the mid is super unsafe right it's a down forward four right super unsafe That's negative 17, but it pushes back. There you go. See, 15 frames caught up with him, right? Um, he may not get lost for it, but you could definitely and more than likely punish it, depending on the character in the matchup, right? Here's where it gets interesting. One, two, bam, right? So, of course, like usual, same rules as far as damage goes. One spin adds a little bit of damage. Two spins, sorry, two spins adds a little bit of damage. Uh, three spins adds more, and that's pretty much the highest as far as damage goes, right? The frame data is what's interesting here, because uh, you do a second spin, now he's plus eight. Instead of being punishable, he's plus eight. It causes blocks to happen, like a heavy block stun. And there is uh, three active frames. 
So you could potentially get a guard break situation out of this. And it's the same uh, no matter how many spins he does after that. Three spins is still plus eight. Four spins is still plus eight. Knockdown's the same. Yeah. Knockdown's the same. So you fighting against King and you didn't know that shit. You like you like oh let me punish the you know they, you know about that being punishment but you don't know about that being plus. <laughs> Eat a four two one and shit like that. And be careful. A lot of range on that shit. Ah right, here we go. So if I'm not mistaken, this is one of those that has the giant swing rule set. So. Uh, one uh, one plus four or two plus three goes into a, a chain grab out of Jaguar spin, right? One plus four, two plus three appear to go into the exact same one, right? They both look like one plus two breaks. I'm going to input three plus four, one plus three. One plus four, sorry. Three, uh, Jaguar step, one plus four. That's Jaguar step, one plus five is input there. Oh, one plus two. One plus two doesn't break it. Does two break it? Nope, two doesn't break it. One breaks it. One breaks it, but it looks like a one plus two break. Next we got Jaguar step two plus three. One doesn't break it. One plus two doesn't break it. Right. Two breaks it. So Jaguar Step has a legitimate 50-50 mix-up after the uh, the uh, you know after the Jaguar Step with the throw, the chain grab, the chain grab, the, the starting of that chain grab is a 50-50 mix-up on how to break the throw. One or two, you gotta guess. And the cool thing is, if you're a king, you're the king player doing this. Is you could buffer that shit super easily because Jaguar step by itself is three plus four. So depending on which one you want to do, if I want to do two plus three, I just input three plus four and hold the three down. And input two. And vice versa, I can hold the four down and input one. So there's no fucking this up. If you want to go for this, you don't have to do the weird crisscross thing. You know, I mean you kinda do, but if you're on pad, for example, it might feel weird. But just remember you can use this buffering trick. Buffering trick. Hold the button, the kick button that you need down, and then input the punch button afterwards. Uh, it doesn't seem like it doesn't seem like multiple spins change anything about this. Yeah, same damage. Always twenty damage. A 12 frame throw if that matters because of Jaguar spin. Uh, I think it might work after Rage Drive. Yeah, if you want to throw away a free Rage Drive follow up, you could totally do two spins and set people up, I guess. The thing is, he gets nothing for if they stay grounded. That's why I don't like it in that situation. If they stay grounded and he do, you do the Jaguar shit, he doesn't really get anything special. The Jaguar step. Um, and I'll get to the chain grabs later. I'll get to the chain grabs later. Uh, as a screw? Oh! Oh! Ah, okay, sorry about that. That was a long time ago, that's I forgot. Oh my god! Look at the damage! Recover super slow off of it though, so the follow ups are gonna be limited. <laughs> I 
That alone is 84 damage. the scaling system in this game it makes the easier shit when you have such high damage moves that are like one hit high damage it makes the harder shit obsolete in situations like this you gotta love that right into it. Time is a little awkward, but... Uh, 84 damage, man. Imagine if you had a floor break to that shit. Oof. My spine shudders at the thought. That could have been a nice Oki situation. As a matter of fact, let me see something. is not consistent at all. I was thinking that float would be this, uh, the perfect situation to set up the... Uh Cuts of flows might set up the Jaguar steps I was talking about before, but it's I can't get them consistently. Awkward ass king shit. working. Alright, the window looks like he could be interrupted. But that could be, that seems like a better one than before. Could be a nice little pocket set situation. Also, is he teching or is he holding back? He's holding back. We want a tech trap.
Okay, so <clears throat> that's pretty much it for this. We know we got the actual chain grab started. We got chain throw startup. We got all sorts of goodies out of this spin. The spin is pretty good. Better than I thought. You definitely gimmick your way through a, a lot of low-level opponents using this spin stuff, especially the spin four. This spin four, will, you will smash your way through low-level opponents just by grabbing after it. But grabbing and then forward two one when you do anything else. Easy. You don't even need to do the fancy grabs. It's regular ass throws. Damn, that shit's filled with grip. Alright, so next we got his uh, crouch dash, right? And he does have a way dash, and it's very hard to do. Uh, I don't know how to do it. You're supposed to not have a neutral input. You're supposed to not have a neutral input to do his wave dash. And it's like, fuck that, right? One cross dash is fine, though. One cross dash, you can go into instant shiny wizard. There you go, see? You could uh, go into giant swing. Right? You could uh, stay crouching. Go into rock bottom. As you saw earlier, you could input Muscle Buster out of it. You could input uh, Tijuana Titty Twister over here. You can do all that shit. You can go into uh, a while standing four, a while standing two, while, sta uh, while standing one. The fucking full crouch down forward one easily out of it. While standing three for some reason, which wasn't even on his move list here when I went through the while standing moves. <laughs> Probably because it sucks. It is zero on block, actually, so it doesn't suck. This wasn't on the RB Norway movement. Weird. Maybe it was in the bottom area. That's 16 frame high. 16 frame high knockdown. But whatever. Alright, so. Full crouch. Oh yeah, so you can input this as cross dash one. I said this earlier. That's the first thing it's telling me to do. Next we got this knee. This is cross dash four. Forward neutral down down forward four. Counter hit juggle start. Pretty much, it's like the yeah. Oh, maybe not. The easy mode combo is gonna work, right? That's gonna work. 64 damage, but you can do funky shit like forward forward one, forward forward one into the other bullshit if you do the harder combos. Um, yeah, this is an armor key move, I think. It is zero on block, so it's not useless, and it is really kind of fast and if you input it at a crouch dash that's not bad because if you do crouch dash let go it's a wall standing three because yeah if you, if, you, if, you, if you try to input a crouch dash three you get a generic down three as you can see here but if you uh, do the crouch dash and let the stick go to neutral for a moment and then input something you will get a wall standing then you go wall standing four while uh while standing two you know although he doesn't have a crouch dash too regularly because he will do a crouch. Uh, he will do a, a crouch jab. He does not have a crouch dash too regular. He will do a crouch jab if you try that. So if you let go, let the stick go to neutral. You will get while standing two. And the same thing with while standing one. If you input as crouch dash one, you'll get the low, the full crouch down forward one low. This is another way to do it for whatever reason. So uh, that might make this three useful because zero on block. First of all, that sets up giant swing. If they don't back dash and they stand still. Uh, or if they try to, uh, the only thing they could do is jab you to stop this. Or break it, obviously. Because that's a 10 frame grab. And they slower than a jab, it's gonna grab it. Assuming you input correctly, right? So, while standing three is not without uses. I would prefer to personally use it out of this crouch dash rather than just a generic while standing. You know? And it does seem to have some decent range. Yeah, so it has okay range. And this is a nice chunk of damage on the knockdown. Yeah, it's a nice little uh, 28 damage. So it's not a useless move. 
It's not a particularly amazing one, though. Alright, so we got this knee here. This knee is negative eight. Uh, on normal hit, it doesn't get any juggles. But if I were to guess, near the wall, he would probably get down four, four, three, four as a wall combo. If you connect this near the wall. Yeah, nothing reaches. Nothing reaches. And they can attack. Hard to time it, but definitely could get around it. It does push back some on block. So it definitely kind of tracks step to his right. You can see here, there's some space created, but it is negative nine. So you can't really do much with that space. Oh, but if you get just the tip block, you actually get out of jab range. That's good. See? Alright, so if you could space this well, you could make some crazy shit happen. With a back dash. Alright, next we got what's it called? Black Bomb. So Black Bomb. I think it's called Black Bomb. Couch Dash 1 plus 2. It's basically the regular version of his, uh, of his uh, rage drive, but it's inputted as cross dash one plus two instead of down back one plus two, which is interesting. That's like unusual. So it's a counter hit. Uh, this is a counter hit juggle starter. And on block, it's only negative five force crouch. So yeah, force, you can pretty much see it forces crouch. Easy to get that easy to get that by accident the while standing one plus two. It's safe, I didn't have a block that's all. Oh my god. <laughs> Basically hold down forward one the whole way as you input it to not accidentally get while standing one plus two. Just hold it down forward. Okay, okay. Maybe with the tap frame. Okay. Seems to cover his left side pretty well. Not walk though, but step yes. If you get hit, you cannot hold back. It's a hard knockdown, similar to the uh, forward to one knockdown. As far as him getting anything guaranteed, like the Ollie kick. It looks like it knocks out further. So, oop, probably not. Yeah, probably not. It knocks out too far. But on counter hit, you get the juggle. Shit. All right, so next we got cross dash two plus three or cross dash one plus four. So one of these starts up the um, RDC, Rolling Death Cradle. The other one starts uh, another chain grab. And just like the Jaguar step uh, um, chain grabs, 
They both look like one plus two break. They both are one or two break. You gotta guess. You gotta guess. One break. Not one plus two. Not two. Two break. This is cross at two plus three. Two break. Two break, see? Not one. And not one plus two. So you gotta guess. King breaks the rules. That's why he's the actual grappler of the game, if you will. Norway stuff is done. That means all we have left are his grabs. His grabs. Oh man, his grabs. <laughs> Those of you who don't know, his grabs take up almost a hundred of his movements. I'm trying to consider here if I want to make the grab a separate video. He used to have five 10 hit combos. Now he only has two. So if I go here, I see from move number 86 all the way down to. One seventy nine. I'm thinking I should do a, a separate video where I go through all of the grabs. And maybe I should just go through the 10 hits and then check out some floor break and wall stuff for this for this one. Alright, so this is the one I was doing before. This is the other one, right? damage if he falls out though. Yeah, so if you're punishing Ling's California roll to the root kick, you'll get a little bit more damage just doing this. It's a 3-3 and end it there. It also allows her to tech. You recover very slow though, so you don't really have any Oki there. You already know if you see if you see the um, if you see that as the fifth hit the down forward two basically he can only go low and then if he goes into the kick it's high mid and then he goes low so there's very clear like pass to a low either way. But I went through this earlier. One, two, one. Uh, sorry. One, two, one, two, two. That is actually a good string for King. There's a lot going on with the, with the uh, basically the beginning of 10 hit combo number one. The first five hits. Very good string. There's a lot going on there. All right, let me recap that right now. So, his general one, two is like standard. It's nothing special. Uh, one, two, one. The third hit of that 10 hit combo is mid. If they get hit, counter hit, he's plus 10. So, 1 2 1 gets a free 1 2. Or a free 2 1. You're choosing. The thing is, since it pushes out like that, you might want to hold forward and just do 1 2. 
and you get 34 damage, right? Not only that, though, if one soon one normal hits, the uh, uh, fourth and fifth hit are natural combo. See? That's a natural combo for 22 damage, right? So, and then if they block it, he's only negative 10. If they block one, two, one, he's negative four. If they block one, two, one, two, uh, sorry, one, two, one, one, two, he's only negative seven. So that's why you'll see that often with King players. Very good string. Very, very, very good string in a lot of ways. So that's his general good one, two pressure with King. If he starts to duck after the one, two, plop, and he can totally delay that third hit. Quite a bit. Pop, right? <laughs> so. You can totally delay that. Hit. And no, you cannot sidestep it unless he delays it. I think, um, I think that Lily was able to sidestep that fifth hit, though. If I remember right, I tested it in part one of this run. All right. So I tested some of the hit throw, okay. Wasn't it after Jai, uh, Shining Wizard? What is Shining Wizard? One of the throws that he had just, uh, maybe not. Maybe if, only if you get it too slow. Yeah, maybe only if you get it too slow. So King, uh, what is this? 24 damage, right? Okay. That is a floor break. I mean, this is kind of scary. Damn it. That was giant swing I had to input there for the wall throw, right? I tried to do it instant while running. Um, it's a shiny wizard, basically. Potentially, you can add 23 to what was that? 97 plus 23, right? So 107, 117. 120 potential 120 damage off of this situation mid stage with 
wall carry, and floor break. A potential 120 damage. The only thing that's not guaranteed there is that ground grab. Um, by the way, I don't know what his best general wall combo is. That was definitely something I wanted to test with this rage drive, because this I remember that his the cool thing about King is when it comes to this floor break stage is I mean he's scary in general because his fucking running Jaguar bomb breaks the floor and he could continue his combo. So his natural combo ender breaks the damn floor. It's crazy. Yeah, so King is one of the scariest characters on the floor break stage. Um, as far as like a single hit floor break, um, other than uh, Shining Wizard out of the air, running Jaguar Bomb, it seems like this might be it after like, uh, you know, nah, you would never do this. You would never, you would, you would, you would never do that. You would just do a running Jaguar bomb, right? <laughs> no matter what, because even if they, if you do a core screw, you do a running Jaguar bomb to end the combo, no matter what. And don't you get that for wall splat? If you, uh... There's a way for him to do a running Jaguar bomb off the wall instead of his wall throw. I don't remember what it is. I think it's the... Um, yeah. No, you do that. And that... Okay, there you go. So, if you do Tijuana Twister off of a wall break, you do the, uh, what would usually be Giant Swing out of the air. You do that, right? And that will floor break. It will do slightly less damage than the standard one, but it will floor break at the wall for quite a bit of damage, as you can see. And then you can continue his wall combo. He had an angle too, so that makes him think he can totally. That makes him think he can do some really weird shit. That's what that makes him think. If you were to get enough of a sidestep, you could re splat maybe. So slow. Well, let's just see how much an easy thing does here. Let's see. Right? Easy, right? Unfortunately, the last hit didn't connect as a low hit. But that did 80 whatever, right? Or 76, whatever it was. Which is good damage, still. Oh, 
Oh, I have to go one, two right into it. Okay. Six was that? The angle. Man, if you could recognize that you're off axis for that, you could get you could convert that for a lot of damage. A lot more damage. Hard to buffer that. Oh, that breaks the floor? I didn't even know. That's crazy. That breaks the floor? Weird. But then he giant swing. Is that because it's down back? Why am I getting a giant swing no matter what? Can't do it again, though. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, there you go. So, 70, uh, 72, was it? Plus 17. Alright. So, 89 damage potential right at the wall for 4 2 1. Of course, yeah, up one plus two to wall splash. Right? Even if your back is to the wall, you can totally do that right into this command grab, or you can go into the floor break if you have floor break as an option. Yeah, up one plus two in the floor break stage. I would advise you going for the floor break, obviously, right? That's a, That's a tech trap. Because of the one two one being so delayable, it gets in the way of that, that input, so you have to delay it the perfect amount. It's weird. Time to run, but I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be a classic tech trap for King. There 
you go. I think you could hit him out of the air. If you, if you uh, stand straight up, and, like while standing four, maybe. But that has like a wide ass hitbox. So it tends to hit people that get up off to the side off of attack. Jesus Christ, everything floor breaks for this guy. Surprise that did it. Tombstone breaks the floor. That's crazy. Fucking tombstone. That shit does so much damage on its own, and then they allow him to break the floor on top of everything else. Trying to go right to four four one to see if that would work. Nope. Right, I'm just testing random shit now. Uh, so yeah, I mean, pretty much like if you got a floor break and you do the uh, for the wall, you want to go downstairs. You do the jai swing with a two input. You'll get the uh, the spinning power drive. That's uh, the spiral bomb. It's a spinning power drive. A spinning power bomb. Spiral bomb, right? Uh, if you don't, you can go right into regular old giant swing input, right? For a nice chunk of damage. Or you could do one two into a ground grab, down back two plus four, or down back one plus three. If you do down back one plus three, you gotta hold down back the whole time to get the headbutt to the groin. Otherwise, you get the giant swing. I need to be a, you need to be aligned, by the way. If you got a sidewall hit, you can't do that kind of shit. Or if you just want like an easy mode, like that um, forward four three four, totally works. It's a shitty damage option, but whatever. Or you can do one two. It's a one plus four to get the uh, moon salt set up. That's a popular one too. That's pretty much it for his wall combos. Really easy shit. You don't have to get too crazy with it. I mean, I'm sure he has better stuff if you're really sharp, but in general, it's easy shit. Can't think of anything else, really. I'm sure he has some sick tech traps, I don't know, other than the, the moonsault, but the moonsault is the thing that you see the most, so I guess it's good. Good enough. So yeah, um, yeah. Alright, that's all I'm king for now, and whenever I do part 3, which will be later in the week, I think, depending on how much schoolwork I have, I'll go through all the grabs in one sitting. Alright. I pretty much went through all of his strikes, and you guys already know it's going to be uploaded to the YouTube downstairs. So I'll have to edit this one out later. That's it for king. <laughs>